Okay, Canadian internet, no one's that bad. everyone and welcome back to So Biased. My name is Melissa and today we're going to be exploring something a little bit new. If you're new to this channel, I am wildly passionate about clothing from the 1940s, particularly the war era. And today I am going to be doing a movie costume review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the costumes from The Dig, which is an amazing video that talks about the discovery of the Sutton Who find, which is an Anglo-Saxon burial hoard that was found in England in 1939. So this takes place in the days and months leading up to World War II. It's an interesting time of crossover of fashion between the 1930s and 40s. It stars Rafe Fiennes with the most amazing accent. You have to see it for that alone, as well as the movie itself is phenomenal. Absolutely two thumbs up, can't recommend it highly enough. But you're here for the pretty clothes, so let us review all of the pretty clothes from the movie. Though before we get started, just a reminder, if you're new here, please like and subscribe. I upload usually every two to four weeks and I have a lot of crazy, weird, funny content about sewing and 1940s and World War II content. So we start off the movie with Rafe Fiennes in his kind of signature outfit. It is a, looks to be a wool tweed suit with working boots and a flat cap. The flat cap in particular is very iconic of more working class kind of men at the time. So that's a really quick way to say, hey, this guy is working class in addition to the accent. And it's obviously a bit threadbare and worn. And it's a great way of just showing immediately he is uh, working class, as well as he's wearing boots instead of shoes, which shows A, he's ready to go work and B, working class. The first appearance of Mrs. Pretty is in this very kind of casual daytime outfit. She wears very wide leg pants or trousers that are tucked in in a very jodhpur style. This is very 1930s and something that's gonna come into play a lot with Mrs. Pretty's outfit is she is a little bit more in the past. Other characters are more face are more forward facing. She is definitely more past facing. I should also mention on Rafe Fine's jacket when he finally unbuttons it a bit, you can see he's wearing a vest or a waistcoat, depending on where you're from. And that's a really fun addition just because in the 40s, vests and waistcoats are going to be a lot more inaccessible. So the next outfit we see Miss Pretty in is this red and white kind of rust colored, well, it's, I guess it's more of a dress, a day dress. And it's a lightweight, not very fitting outfit. And that works for a number of reasons. A, very much more in the 1930s than in kind of the like very late 30s, early 40s style. I think what the costume designers are going for is that she's a bit stuck in the past. She lost her husband. There's no spoiler. That happens before the movie starts. And I don't think she's really upgraded her style since then. And then we have some more men showing up and we have more tweed suits. We also have the one Panama suit, which I'm here for, which is probably like a very lightweight linen in an off-white color. Everyone is wearing hats, as of course they should be. The next dress we see Miss Pretty in is this kind of cream and green, I think it is floral print. And the other thing I've been noticing with her dresses is they're all a bit too big. and. I think that's meant to indicate her failing health. And the front of this dress is really cute because you can see the, the two rows of floral buttons down the front, which is just perfect. They look like a kind of proto-plastic button, which they did have at this time in like celluloids and a few other really, really early plastics. Early on in the movie, Mrs. Pretty comes across a group of soldiers who are preparing to go to war. And there's one little detail, just, no one else would notice this. No one else would care. Almost none of these guys have any rank. None of them have any accoutrements, any decorations, or any qualifications, badges anywhere on their uniforms, which is perfect because it's a very subtle way of showing the all enlisted. And the uniforms are all brand spanking new, pristine condition, because these are obviously all brand new recruits. Now here is a dress we do not get to see enough of. It is this blue brocadey kind of evening gown, which I love for a number of reasons. Let's talk about, it was still appropriate for someone of the upper class to change into formal evening wear for dinner. And she does. 
even when dining by herself or just with her son, she is still getting dressed for dinner in evening wear. If you've watched Downton Abbey or a lot of other costume dramas, you would see this would be normal. You would get changed into formal evening gowns for dinner every day, even when just eating with your family. And so they still do this here that she's in her evening gown late at night, which I love. This is some great attention to detail. My only complaint is you see it for like 10 seconds and I wanna see the whole thing, but the bodice, the shoulder, the drape of it all look appropriate as much as I can tell in the 10 sections she squished up in a chair in this dress. Okay, now we're back to the burial mound and Mrs. Pretty is wearing another kind of blouse with the pants. And the only critique, if I had any critique for the costumes in this movie, it would be that they suffer from modern blouse syndrome. And I think a lot of these blouses were just purchased from a regular store or something that they already had because they don't really have much shaping to them. They're just kind of very boxy, which is very much the style now, but was not as much the style at the time. It has this nice Peter Pan collar with the ruffle, which I stan, but it just doesn't look quite right for the period. But I mean, the costume people are making hundreds of custom gowns. I don't blame them for going shopping for a few blouses here and there because only crazy nerds like me will know the difference. Can I just make a comment aside about men working in full suits with vests and ties and a fedora? Also, I have no idea why he would be doing this, but one of the workmen is wearing a, it looks like a fair aisle knit sweater vest. Now, I get the whole, I don't want to be wearing sleeves in the summer, but they are all just sweating their brains off and he's wearing a sweater vest. I, choices. Though a fair aisle sweater would be super appropriate for the period. I just don't think he would wear one in this heat because that's crazy, why would you do that? Another outfit we do not see enough of is this beautiful kind of sheer, I assume silk dressing gown with the red appliques on it, which is mwah, gorgeous. Dear filmmakers, costume designers put lots of work into their costumes, especially these beautiful ones. Please stop only showing them for five, five seconds on film. Again, beautiful lace gown for dinner because she is a classy lady. And Mrs. Pretty wears a lace floor length dress out to the dig site for the first find. I just, perfect. And Mr. Brown's wife, Mrs. Brown shows up and I love her outfit, the blouse, I'm not sure about, but she has this beautiful kind of like slightly threadbare red coat with a red uh, or maroon burgundy kind of color clush hat, which would not be super fashionable at this time, but obviously she bought a while ago and is still getting use out of because hats are expensive and you can't just keep buying brand new ones if you're not a wealthy person. And then we see the kind of the contrast of Mrs. Pretty getting ready for dinner. And she has this beautiful kind of backless gown, which kind of looks beaded. Again, let's see the pretty costumes. And her hair in like the almost finger wave style, which is very like late 20s, early 30s. Still a gorgeous look, but again, sets that kind of tone of Mrs. Pretty being a little bit dated. Wonderful crowd scene, everybody dressed really well. Huge mix of working class, upper class, middle class, and you can really tell well by the design of the costumes. Oh, you're so gross. Do you have a good walk? Yes, do you have a good walk? You are wet. And Mrs. Pretty actually stands out because she's dressed quite plainly for this. She's wearing just the simple kind of slightly misshapen hat and the, what I think is a, the linen jacket and everything. And she actually stands out in her plainness, which is a cool choice that I really like. Love the children's clothing here, super appropriate. Love the hairstyles. They actually did like appropriate hairstyles for kids of this age and I'm just living for it. Now here when we have all of the museum people show up, only criticism, I would love a bit of fancier suits here. Cause the other thing I don't see much of is turn ups on the bottom of the pants. So at the bottom where you have the cuff turned up, which was very, very popular at the time. See my video on World War II Russian clothing about how the British freaked out when they couldn't have them anymore. Now we have the brother show up and he is wearing a button up shirt, but it's not buttoned up at the table, which would be pretty bad manners at the time, especially in an upper class house. May just be a character choice to show that he's very carefree. Mrs. Pretty has this very high necked, kind of straight cut shirt. It might be a dress, uh, very cute 
Don't know how accurate that would have been, but I, I like it. it. It fits, the silhouette is totally right, so that works. Now, <laughs> this is my favorite scene in the movie. This is the scene that made me realize I had to do a review of the costumes in this movie. Because when Lily James shows up at the dig site as Peggy Piggott, she is in this uh, very short shirt, very short pants, generally known as a play suit at the time. And I was so angry. I'm like, this is completely inappropriate for a woman of this time. You would not ever wear this to a work site, even outdoors. This is not okay. It is totally unsuitable. And then she goes and says, we just got called off of our honeymoon. I'm so sorry. I have nothing appropriate to wear. And that shut me up. Cause I was like, that is, absolutely the most appropriate thing to be wearing on your honeymoon in the summer on the beach. Costume designers, like, you, mm, you did your homework. I'm super impressed with that. The next outfit we see Peggy in is uh, this button up shirt that's quite short and tied in the front, like almost like a cabbage tie front, which would have actually been worn at the time. That would have been something that women would wear for the summer. It's not quite, it's definitely not work wear, but because they're at a dig site, that would probably be okay. You can see she's wearing a longer skirt and Mrs. Pretty is on site as well. And she's wearing this very lacy kind of knit dress, which is much more vertical, very 1930s and a lower kind of clush style hat, which again, very 1930s. Back on the dig site, she's now wearing a button up shirt and pants. Again, a bit of modern blouse syndrome. It's possible she would have borrowed this from one of the men or her husband. Okay, yeah, I'm a dummy. You see her later when she's going to bed wearing the same shirt and it's no longer tied up in front and it's very obviously a men's shirt. So yeah, that's cool. She borrowed her, borrowed her husband's shirt and then just tied it up to fit her a little better, but very well done. So Piggy's like rusty orange pants with the suspenders are adorable super perfect for this period. You can even see the uh, the zipper closure on it, which is kind of a more chonky zipper, which would also be super appropriate for the times because obviously they hadn't invented uh, invisible zippers. But now at dinner, we see finally we get the brother into a tux and Miss Pretty is in her sleeveless gown and then Peggy is in more of like a ruffled kind of blouse, which would be more modern than the 1930s kind of straight hanging dress. Another day, Mrs. Pretty is back on the dig site and she's wearing this kind of pencil skirt and blouse. Blouse again, suffering from modern blouse syndrome. I think it's the same blouse she wore at the beginning, which you know, it's fine. I don't know about the pencil skirt because it has that kind, the kind of like the mermaid tail cuts in the bottom. It's a bit fitted for what I would normally imagine a 1930s skirt to be. Now we have Peggy in this little, I think it's like a yellow plaid shirt. Again, very short, very fitted and shorts. Again, shorts would be okay. These are a bit short, but again, we talked about how most of her wardrobe is for her honeymoon. Long comment about t-shirts. T-shirts were not an outer layer. <laughs> I see a bunch of them here. T-shirts were an underlayer. They were worn underneath a button-up shirt. Now, now we see the double-breasted suit and it's on the kid. But I love it. You can see the big wide lapels, big like large crossover section, very appropriate. Not the keenest on the leather jacket and jeans thing. That was not really a thing. They definitely wouldn't be blue jeans with the big pockets and the double stitches and all the perfect fading that makes it look like the most quintessential James Dean movie. We're way too early for that. Of course, the guy in the leather jacket and jeans rides off on a motorcycle. Of course he does. So the next outfit we see Peggy in is this kind of floral blouse with the Peter Pan collar. Again, modern blouse syndrome, but it's okay. It's super cute. And then she wears the little jumper uh, pullover sweater over top of it, which is super cute. I really love that with the, I think shell or wood buttons and the little yellow skirt is gorgeous. Now the dress Mrs. Pretty wears to the coroner's inquest is perfect. Obviously this is a more formal occasion, so she's gonna be dressed up and it's in this pink kind of straight dress with these, looks like big applique pieces on it. Another comment I wanna make is other than Mrs. Pretty, nobody has 30 changes of clothes in this movie. Everybody's wearing the same suit or two 
that they have and that's it they're not showing up in a new shirt or a new suit every single day they only have a very small number even the wealthier people in this are always reappearing in outfits they've been seen in before which is so perfect because so many directors are like oh i want him in this today and that today and that the next day and tell this story and here's what his clothing should be doing but that's not the reality people didn't have 20 suits unless you were incredibly well, extremely well done. And we have the garden party again. I really need Mrs. Pretty to take this jacket off. <laughs> she keeps wearing this jacket over every outfit and it means I can't see the outfit. And I'm frustrated because I want to see all these beautiful clothes that they've made. But you can see all the people in these lovely garden party outfits, uh, mostly knee to mid calf length dresses with a little kind of shrug over top and a sun hat, mostly straw, a little bit of felt. The men are in suits, but more summer suits. So it's almost fun to go through this movie and, and name all the things that are about to be completely rationed of, oh, that's definitely not going to have seven buttons. Oh, you're definitely not going to be able to get that double-breasted suit. But it's fun to kind of nitpick that stuff of all these things that are about to go away. I also love that Mrs. Brown May shows up to the garden party wearing gloves and no one else does. Even though she's the, the working class, one of the few working class women there, that she's wearing gloves, which is a little more formal, um, but a little more old fashioned. I think that's just a really cute touch. So overall, I am a huge fan of this movie. Love the story, love the costumes, love the setting, love Ray Fiennes' accent. But the costume designer for this was Alice Babbage. So she was nominated for a BAFTA award for this and rightfully so, she did such a great job telling the story with the costumes. Also, there's a book coming out about the dig of the Sutton Who, which I will put a link to in my description below. I'll put a link to the movie if you haven't seen it. So let me know what you thought. Do you like the costume reviews? Do you want to see more of this? Did you despise it and never want to hear from me again? It's cool. Do you have recommendations for other movies I should have a look at? I know there's a ton of wartime movies that are coming out or have come out recently, so. I'm happy to do more if you enjoy this. I have a bunch more projects coming up and the very first of the World War II Sewing Challenge entries are starting to come out. So go follow my playlist on the World War II Sewing Challenge. I'm adding videos to that every time that there's a new submission that comes out. If you wanna join, it's not too late. Missions aren't even due until May, so you have lots of time if you wanna try something, including mending something counts because make do and mend. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Please leave me a comment. Uh, please share the video. Any interaction you have with this video helps the algorithm pick it up and let me know what you'd like to see in upcoming videos. Until then, stay happy and healthy, stay safe, take care of each other, and we'll see you soon. Bye. There are definitely not makeup stains all over this shirt. Can't imagine why. No such undertaking has been received. That's the, the, is it a duel with Germany? I want to say Inquisition. It's not an Inquisition. Inquest. No. People are allowed to walk past the house. We've been through this. No.